How long must I wait, damn it? Blaming me will not further your agenda, sir. How long is it going to take to fix me properly? A month? A year? You have the right to disapprove of our Good evening, Doctor. Good evening, How is my son doing? What do you think of your reception here? Any complaints? I have had the uttermost reservations about this hospital since we arrived. But we had no other choice, considering the state of emergency. Is there something in particular that's bothering you? Some of the staff were not especially welcoming. I suspect they're not accustomed to dealing with patients of such social standing. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. I never could keep anything from her. It's locked, all right. Can I be sure I'll not find your unconscious body in the house again? I promise you, you'll not find my unconscious body. For God's sake, how can you say such a thing? How can you refuse to listen? I tried to warn you for so long. No, I won't let my only son die. You promised me you'll stay alive. Your son lied to you, like the whole world lies to us. Side, Dr. Reed, I know that Pembroke will prevail and survive his own death. You always knew the words. Good evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? Your son wished to die, Beatrice. Why did you hide such crucial information? Are you not aware suicide is a crime? Mortimer could be thrown in jail. I can't let that happen. I won't. I understand you fear the legal consequences, Mrs. Goswick. But don't you realize your silence significantly affects your son's case? All my son needs is help and comprehension. Not judgment and punishment for what he may or may not have done. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Admitted, Mortimer. Your mother had you hospitalized here because you tried to kill yourself. Yes, it's true. All right, then. This is the first time we've really shared information about your case. Shall we call this progress? Call it what you want, Dr. Reed. Can I help you in any way, Mr. Goswick? I wrote a letter for my mother. She was supposed to read it after... after my death. But... I suppose she doesn't have to read it now. 
I see. And is this letter still near the place where you tried to take your own life? Yes. And I don't want anyone reading my last words. I mean, I'm still here. If you bring me back that letter, then perhaps we'll talk. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good evening, sir. Doctor. I will not let you down, my boy. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. But with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research, yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. In this letter, Mortimer Goswick does nothing to hide his desire to die. I could give it to his mother, but doing so would betray his trust.
Opium is one of the main ingredients of Strickland's medication. Never a good move.
Master White, damn it. Blaming me will not further your agenda, sir. How long's it going to take to fix me properly? A month? A year? You have the right to disapprove of our methods. And you will kindly apologize when you're feeling better. Be falling apart. Good evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? You realize your son could try to kill himself again. He might succeed next time. I think about it every minute. But I won't stop fighting for my son's future. That's how much I love him. You're right. Your son's death was not fatal. And unlike many on their own, he is lucky to have you by his side. I can't give up on him. I just can't. I have conceded many times in my life, but giving up on my son is something I am incapable of. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. I have retrieved your letter, Mr. Goswick. I can assure you that nobody read it but me. Thank you. <clears throat> this is for you, then. For your help. And for your silence. I think you should talk to your mother. It would be good for both of you. Thank you, Dr. Reed. <clears throat> I'll think about it. Now, please, let me be. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. I'm all right. Don't waste your time with me. You always knew the words to calm the children, Ellen. As for me, what a blundering idiot. So many deaths. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? I located the shop, but it was vandalized, and the owner is missing. All I found was your order. I was afraid of such bad news. People are so desperate they're ready to burgle a shop for drugs. That's quite a list you ordered. Opium, sodium hypochlorite. It can't be just headaches you're trying to cure. This dreadful influenza, of course. I already ran some tests on hopeless cases. Without success, I must admit. Do you realize you could create a lethal poison without the correct dosage? Then there are the legal ramifications. Is this not true of any medical substance, Dr. Reed? However, if you would agree to improve it, I'd be glad to accept your help. As long as you promise to be scrupulous with your experiments, I may try to gather these substances and even help improve upon the mixture. That's all I'm asking for, Dr. Reed. That's all I'm asking. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. I can't let Strickland put his patients at risk with opium. Perhaps an adjusted formula will deliver more of a placebo effect. Strickland's project could be dangerous. I have a mind to report him to Dr. Aykroyd.
Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? I have managed to improve the mixture by diluting it. Have you ever heard of Sir Joseph Francis Olive or the placebo effect? No, I don't think so. Why? A placebo is a substance or procedure that has no actual physical effect. You made a placebo of my project. Why? Research has established that a placebo, as long as the subject believes in the effect, can provoke a positive physiological reaction. Really? That's fascinating. And you want me to, what, administer the placebo and see what occurs? Something like that, yes. Well, I'm a bit surprised, but I trust you, Dr. Reed. Please take the key to my cabinet and put this placebo there for future use. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. At least Strickland can't kill anyone with this formula.